the Lord. Amen. Trusting in his only word. He's never failed us yet. I imagine when they wrote that song and they thought about our ancestors and they were walking down to the river and they would hear a sound and they would say, oh, 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 you can't turn around. We've come too far to turn around now. And we've come too far to turn around now. So let us go on by faith. Amen. Leaning on the Lord. We welcome one another, each and every one of you here this morning. Uh, we come today to praise and worship God. You know why? Because he's worthy. He's worthy because this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. So we come just to praise God. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in the midst. So let us get on one accord. Let us talk to God for a while. Amen. And, and see what God wants us to do. We're always asking God something. Ask him what you need you to do for him. You know, and I think one thing he's going to say is just praise my holy name. So we come, we welcome each and every one of you all, those who may be wa uh, watching later by streaming. We pray that you will get a, a message this morning that will help soothe your soul, comfort you, encourage you, and help you get through this week, the days, the hours, the minutes. Whatever you're struggling with, we pray that God will help you to get through all of that. Amen. Our call to worship is is coming from Psalms 135 and 6 and Lamentations 3, 22 through 25. I will read my portion, and, and y'all can repeat after me your portion. Amen. We don't have it up today, so we will just go this way. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. And the people said they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Y'all know that scripture. Amen. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The people said the Lord is good. To those who wait on him, to the soul that seeks him. And the pastor, the leader said, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. And the people of God said, my word, my soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Praise God for his call to worship. At this time, we will have a selection by our choir.
It's time for our call of confession coming out of 1 John. It will be our reading. If we say that we love no sin, we deceive ourselves. Or if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, God is faithful to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise God and thank God for cleaning us up. I don't know where I'd be if it wasn't for the detergent, Clorox, and stuff that God used to clean me up. It take all that and then some. But somebody says it took one drop of blood and made us spotless. So we thank God for that drop of blood. Amen. He is so worthy to be praised. Let us bow our heads and pray to God and, and ask God to just come in and help us to be the people that he's called us to be. Amen. Amen. We thank God for who he is, all that he's done, the love that he gives us when we don't even deserve it. So let us bow our heads and pray to God. Our Father, we stand here and sit here in your presence today, and we just want to ask you to forgive our sins. Forgive the sins that we remember and those that have been forgotten. Lord, we ask that you forgive our many failures in the face of trials and temptation. And, and when we are stubborn in the face of correction, Father God, we come as boldly as we can and as humble as we can right now, asking you to just search our heart. Those things that are not pleasing in our heart, we ask in the name of Jesus right now that you remove those things, those calluses that are set up in our heart and got hard, Father God. We ask right now that you remove all those things. Forgive the times we are sure of our own righteousness and fail to be humble, trusting in your mercy and your grace. Forgive the harsh judgments we make on others, Father God, and how we sometimes seem to judge everybody but ourselves. And Father, we ask for your leniency. Show us mercy, Father God. Allow your grace to just come in and move all in our hearts, our mind, our soul, and let our spirit be on one accord with your spirit, Father God. Forgive the lies we have told and the truths we have avoided. Forgive us of the pain that we have caused others, Father God. And the indulgence we have shown ourselves. Lord God, just like David said, have mercy on us according to your loving kindness and your tender mercy. Blot out all our transgression, Father God. Purge us and make us white as snow that we may live the life that you've called us to live and treat folk the way you want us to treat folk. Make us whole. Make us new. And give us a fresh anointing and a fresh spirit right now that we may praise you with everything we have in us. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And everybody said amen. Amen and amen. At this time, we will have a selection by our choir. Amen. I know that the Virgin is a beautiful 
That great city. In the city, so bright and fair. In that great city. In 
Your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You were close like no other. I know you as a father. Mm-hmm. I know you as a friend, and I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful, all my life, all my life you have been faithful.
goodness of God. You know, it's hard to be faithful when times are hard and you get frustrated, you get mad, and sometimes God just don't seem to be moving as fast as you want him to move. You just get, it's hard to be faithful. ones are gone and your heart's heavy your soul is heavy and your best friend's gone and you can't call them up it's hard to be faithful you lose your job it's hard to be faithful you come to church and no one seems to love you when you come to church to be faithful and sometimes we come to church so we can be loved don't we but when you can't get love at the church you ain't getting it at home you ain't getting it on the job and you asking God God where are you and he just simply say I'm the same place I was when you last called on my name I never leave you nor forsake you. I'm always there for you. We come this morning to, again, give God glory and to praise a fabulous, awesome God. I could stand up here all day and give you all kind of words that I come up with and the dictionary come up with for how good God is, but it wouldn't be sufficient. And your words would be different than my words because your problems are different than my problems. Your situation may be different than my situation, but all I do know is we serve a good God, an awesome God, a God who never makes mistakes. And I thank God that he is who he says he is. Amen. I won't be before you too long this morning. Pray that the Holy Spirit will use me however he sees fit to use me this morning. I give glory to God because he is first in my life, and I thank God. I don't always do things correctly. I don't always say the right things. I don't really always have a smile on my face. But one thing I can count on is the joy that God has put in my heart. And I don't mind telling folk this joy that I have. The world did not give it to me. And you know what? I refuse to let the world take it away from me. Amen. Don't tell me what I can't do. You can tell me what I can do, but don't tell me what I can't do. Because the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Our text this morning, if you don't mind uh, navigating with me, to John, the third chapter, beginning with the 16th verse. We all learned this verse in Sunday school, didn't we? Amen. It is one of the easiest verses besides he wept <laughs> that we can learn. Amen. I remember one time we were in Sunday school, and, and the Sunday school teacher said, I want you to repeat a Bible verse that you learn, and all the kids were saying this and that. It got to me. I said, he wept. <laughs> and the Sunday school teacher said, that's all you got? I said, well, he wept. I said, is that not true? He said, well, yeah, that's true. I said, well, you say remember a, Bible, a scripture, and I, I chose he wept. And I believe sometimes God is still crying because we're not doing what we're supposed to do. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. That's enough. Praise God for the reading of his holy word. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I want to talk simply today about the love of God. I simply say, but that's nowhere near a simple topic to try to get a hold of. For the love of God to me is unfathomable. A child can memorize John 3.16 and scholars and theologians are still trying to plummet the depth of this scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten, his uniquely born son that, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Now, the Greeks had three words primarily for love. One word was eros, from which we get the English word uh, erotic. Eros love is not mentioned anywhere in the New Testament because eros is all about taking. It's all about getting something without anything being given in return. Uh, erotic love is a selfish love. Eros uh, uh, is about the self. And there is another word called uh, phileo, uh, from which we get the word Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. And phileo means a love that is between friends and family members. It's a, it's a give and take type situation. It's a fraternal kind of friendship love and, and it reciprocates one with the other. But the, the love that is mentioned in the text today is agapeo or agape. And agape love has nothing to do with the one being loved. Uh, but it all is all about the character of the lover. Agape is not about the person being loved because the person being loved may be totally unworthy of that love. Uh, the love of God has nothing to do with the object of his love. But the love of God is based on the character of the one who loves us. Jesus Christ, through God the Father, loves us. He simply just loves us. There's nothing that, can, that we can do to earn the love of God. There's nothing we can do to deserve the love of God. And when we get up in the morning, he just loves us. Before we go to bed at night, he loves us. When we are doing things we have no business doing, he loves us. When we are in places that we have no business being, he loves us. When we act in ways that displease him, he still loves us. When we are unlovable, stubborn, disobedient, uh, recalcitrant, and, and self-naked self, uh, self and, and all of that bad stuff, guess what? When we don't act right, when we don't walk right, when we don't talk right, when we don't live right, oh, God still loves us. Now, my brothers and sisters, I don't know how, how that thought makes you feel. But when I think about the love of God and how God has, uh, has, has, has no qualifications on how he feels about me, he just loves me because that's who he is. That word would never make sense to you unless you say it to yourself, unless you put your name in there. For God so loved Timothy Porter. God so loved me. Whatever your name is, whatever your station in life, wherever you come from, uh, whatever your educational level is, whatever your social strata, whatever your financial condition, more than matters the most that God loves you because he loves you. Well, St. Augustine says, if you were the only person alive, hmm, God would love nobody but you because he loves 
He, he loves you. I, I can't stop saying that. I, I've been talking to myself all morning since 6.30 in the morning, uh, talking about how he loves me. I can't stop saying that. He loves me. He, he loves me. He, he loves me. He, 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 he doesn't just protect me, but he loves me. He got his arms wrapped around me. He, he stroked me. He rocked me in a cradle of his arm. He, he loves me. Everything that I, he pacifies me. He's making sure that I have everything. I need Jesus. He loves me. This I know. Because the Bible tells me so. Ah, oh, this one verse, this one verse, John 3, 16, has brought multitude of people to Christ Jesus. Uh, there's a, a, a writer named Herschel Hobbes. He said that, he says of John 3, 16, it is the gospel of superlatives. Martin Luther, the great Protestant reformer, he calls John 3, 16, the gospel of um, of, of miniature and and A.T. Robinson, uh, who is a New Testament scholar, he referred to John three six three sixteen as the little gospel. If all the verses in the Bible were lost in John three sixteen, John three sixteen three sixteen will cover everything in the Bible all the way from Genesis to Revelation. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting. John 3.16 answers and addresses several isms and several ologies, superstitions, and propaganda. Let, 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 let's, let, let, let's diagram gram this sentence and see how God answers every uh, ism that culture and the devil can throw at the Bible. For God responds to atheism, which claims that there is no God. So love responds to fatalism, which asserts that God is impersonal, is an impersonal force. The world responds to nationalism, which claims that God only loves certain people. That he gave responds to materialism because God is a giving God. His only gotten son responds to Mohammedism because Muhammad says God has no son. That whosoever believes in him responds to five-point cabalism, which says that God died for just certain people. Should not perish responds to an uh, 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 which says that there is no hell. And as we have gone through nothing, that's got to happen to us. Something has to happen somewhere. And have everlasting life responds to Arominianism that says that God only gives to a certain kind of life. So what does that verse 316 mean? I'm glad that you all are intelligent this morning and have questions to ask me. What does it really mean for us in this unlovable, unloving society that we live in? God loves First of all, it's global. He loves the world. He loves everybody. Red and yellow, black and white, huh? All oppression in his sight. God loves the drug addicts. God loves the AIDS infected. God loves the Haitian Africans and uh, Colombians and Mexicans. Af African Americans, Caucasians. <laughs> Got you, Brother John. <laughs> God loves everybody. And Sister Millie. <laughs> one, one of the problems with the United States of America is that we think God just loves America. Hmm? On any given Sunday, you walk in a church and find them singing, God bless America. Like God is not going to bless people in China. God is not going to bless people in Russia. I need to say to Americans, 
that the flag is not the cross. Oh, yeah, the flag, uh, a lot of blood was shed for the flag, but only one drop of blood happened on the cross. Only a drop of blood could save the entire world. The Constitution is not the Bible. God bless America is not our doxology. God loves everybody, not just white people, not just American people, not just black folk, not just Republican people, not just Democrats. God loves everybody. His love stretches in the entire globe. And I want you to get this. Every hour, every day, every second of every moment, of every second, God is loving us. And listen, he did not start loving us when we got here. Let, let me see if I can unpack this and we can get ready to go home. Verse, uh, in, in this verse, for God so loved the world that that word so love demands our attention. So in front of love, so is a de uh, demonstrative adverb, which means he loved in an infinite manner that cannot be humanly understood. Now, this might shock you to hear this, but only God can love human beings. L let me tell you why I say that. Only God can love somebody who puts out cigarettes on a five-year-old child. Only God can love a man who rapes his 13-year-old daughter. Only God can love somebody who rapes a six-month-old child and gives them AIDS. I, I hate that kind of person. I do. I think they ought to be. But God loves them. See how quiet you got right there? Because you think the love of God is for nice church folk. God loves those in the penitentiary. God loves those in, all on the street corner smoking crack. God loves those who, who got five babies and no husband. God loves divorced people. God loves people who have babies without husband. God loves everybody. That, 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 that challenges our Presbyterian uh, theological sensibilities. Because not only does America think God is American, but some predest uh, Presbyterians think God is predestined, is, is Presbyterian. I didn't say y'all. <laughs> I ain't talking about Mount Tabor. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I ain't what church you go to, Sister Nikki? I ain't talking about freedom. <laughs> but God loves ca Catholic folk. God loves Methodist folk. God loves Baptists. He loves the church of God in Christ. He loves Muslims. He loves atheism. He, everybody, God loves. Everybody that's born, God loves. Only God can love humans. And, and, and when you think about people, the people I just named, who are probably the extreme of what humans are, we're not too far from them. It's hard for God to love us because there's, there's some no good in all of us. There's some trash and some filth in all of us. And if God took his hands off of us, we will be just like the people who we criticize. If God withdrew his hand from me and us, we will be on the street corner begging just like those folk we saw coming to church or yesterday on the street begging. Just like that man we passed yesterday or that woman we passed this morning. Can I get a witness this morning? Oh, thank God, thank God for his love that I slept last night in a comfortable bed. 
Thank God that he loves that he loves me not because I'm better than that man or that woman I saw on the street corner. I just found his love in time. I could have been dead. I wish I had somebody, somebody to help me preach this morning. I should have been dead, but Jesus loves me. 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 Say that to yourself. Me. Do you know what you are? You know what you've done. You know where you've been. You know where you should be. But he loves me. A liar. A crook. A dope addict. A wretch. A homeless person. God loves me no matter who you are. He loves you. That, 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 that word is so loved. That demonstrative adverb modifies a verb that is in its earnest tense, active voice, indicative mood. Oh, the demonstrative adverb. So is in front of the verb love. And the verb love is in the earnest tense, active voice, indicative mood. Meaning that there never was a time that God didn't love me. God, 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 God didn't just start to love me. He has always loved me. God will not cease to love me. He will always love me because his love is constantly eternal. Am I making sense to somebody this morning? When your child is born or when, you're, when you learn of the pregnancy with that child, you start to love that child. You start to love when you acknowledge that you're pregnant or, or when that child is born. Not so with God. God loves us before our parents even got together to make us. God knew that, 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 that we were sin, but he still loved us. God knew that we would break every commandment, but he still loved us. That's why I come to church and shout and praise God. That's why I lift up holy hands in the sanctuary. That's why I open up my mouth. That's why if nobody else wants to praise him, I'm going to praise him by myself. Because if nobody loves me in Cleveland, North Carolina, I know that God loves me. If nobody else cares about me and my family, God loves me. If nobody else wants to sit by me in church, Jesus loves me. His love is global. He, 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 not only is that love global, but it's sacrificial. For God so loved, demonstrative. Adverb modifies this, this a verb which, which is an air tense to the active voice indicative mood. For God so loved the world that he gave. That, that's what he loved. That's what his love does. Love gives. Now you hear me. You can, you can give without loving. But you cannot love without giving. When you love, you can't help but to give. I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking parents about you going out there buying a $185 pair of tennis shoes. I'm talking about give discipline, give direction, give them you. See how quiet you got right there? Because you think that stuff substitute. For love. But love is the giving of yourself because when you really love, you pour out you. Mm. Listen, God so loved the world that he gave God. God so loved the world that he gave God. Okay, three times a charm. God so loved the world that he gave God. Not y'all, 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 y'all really trying to make me work hard this morning. 
I had to work hard yesterday preaching that funeral yesterday, and, and I come in this morning, I expect y'all to help me out a little bit and not let me work so hard. I want to go home and eat. I don't, I don't know. Sister Carla might write me a check to go to get some dinner somewhere. I don't know. We might have to have three or four meats before she give me a check, but we might. But y'all trying to make me, I want to finish so I can sit down and go to lunch. So, so I, I'm, I'm working too hard this morning. Y'all can, y'all, hopefully y'all can see it on the, if y'all want to see it that bad, see it on the streaming later on, if it get put up or something. <laughs> but but I, 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 I'm not trying to kill myself up here this morning. I'm going to just throw this little sermon out there, and, and you take it for what it's worth. God gave not some of himself. But he gave all of himself. And when you love, when you give, and you run the risk of being rejected. Help me, somebody. Uh, that's why some of us don't give our love so freely because we don't want to get rejected. I know what I'm talking about. The Bible says he came into his own. I, I wish I had a Bible reader. And his own received him not, but to as many as received him, to them he gave power to be called the sons of God. God gave everything he had in Jesus Christ. Jesus came and because, because, of my, my, because of my sacrifice, he died in my place. He took my place up on the cross. He died as a ransom for my sin. I wish I had a Bible reader here. He, 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 beca he became my substitute. He went to the cross for me. And God gave his uniquely son to us. Now, when you read the book of Genesis around chapter number 22, Abraham gives up his only begotten son, Isaac. But that word only begotten son means uniquely born. Abraham is 99. Sarah is 90, way past their childbearing years. And God gives them a son of their old age, uniquely born. Now, Jesus Christ uh, is the son of God, uniquely born son. And th that, that Mary did not know a man sexually, but she was pregnant by the Holy Ghost. Stay with me. Jesus could not. Uh, have an earthly father because an earthly father would have given him a sin nature. And if Jesus had a sin nature, he wouldn't be worthy to die for my sin upon the cross. Thank God that he was born of the Holy Spirit. I wish I had two or three witnesses here. So he's uniquely born in that his mother was a virgin with child. And, and his being uniquely born, only begotten son of God, makes him eminently qualified to be my redeemer. Y'all going to help me preach? And I'm about through. I'm about through. Yes, sir. Uh, cherubim couldn't do it. Seraphim couldn't do it. Abraham couldn't do it because Abraham was a liar. Mm. Noah couldn't do it. Because he got drunk on the eve of his instructions. Uh, David couldn't do it because he took another man's wife to bed and laid, lied there in adultery. Moses couldn't do it because he, he got tired of God's people. Jacob couldn't do it because he tripped his brother out of his blessings. There had to be a sinless substitute and the only one qualified, y'all help me say it, was Jesus. Now, 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 some of you, some of you look like you, you're ashamed to call that name. But there's salvation in that name. Uh, there's power in that name. There's joy in that name. There's peace in that, there's hope in the wholeness of that name. Uh, there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved except the name Jesus. Oh, I feel like calling a name for a minute. Oh, Jesus, early in the morning. 
Jesus, the rose of Sharon. Jesus, the first and the last. Jesus, early in the morning. Jesus, over in the midnight day. Jesus, late in the midnight hour. There's power in the name. Uh, I wish, uh, Sister Paula, I wish I had my gang with me this morning. Because my gang would be behind my back. And, and they would hear me say, Jesus is on the main line. Uh, if you need salvation, tell him what you want. Jesus, the righteous son of God. Jesus, Adam's redeemer. Abel's vindicator. Abraham's sacrifice. Noah's ark. Moses' bush on fire. Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of a wheel. Joshua's battle axe. Gideon's fleece. Samson's power. David's music. Solomon's wisdom. Jeremiah's bomb in Gilead. Jesus! Mary's little baby boy. Oh, in Matthew, he's Matthew's king. He's Mark's suffering servant. He's Luke's great physician. He's John's word made flesh. Jesus, Jesus, distinctive and supernatural capacity, superlative in sovereign majesty, exclusive in spiritual beauty. There's power in the name of Jesus. Oh, some of you, some of you still act like you're ashamed to call on the name Jesus. That's because you haven't been in trouble yet. That's because you haven't been sick enough yet. But if you get sick enough, you will call on the name of Jesus. Some of you act like you're embarrassed to call on him because you haven't been sick. But there is a name. I said there is a name. There is a name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every tongue must confess. In the name of Jesus, his love is sacrificial. Then his love is personal. Whosoever, whosoever, now Calvin, the one who started the Presbyterian Church, Calvinism, says that Jesus died only for the elect. But John 3, 16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever drunk, come on to me. Homosexual, come on. Murderer, come on. Oh, oh, I, 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 I haven't called your name yet. Okay. Liar, come on. Uh, oh, I'm not on your street yet. Okay. Haughty eyes, come on. Lying tongue. Come on. Hands that shed innocent blood. Come on. A heart that devises wicked schemes. Come on. Feet that are quick to rush into evil. Come on. A false witness who pulls out lies on another person who stirs up conflict in the community. Come on. Come on. Come on. God says, come on. I can fix all of that. Adulterer. Come on. Backslider. Come on. Whosoever you are, whosoever will, come unto me. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get through this little sermon, but give me about 15 seconds. But we put so many rules on people that we can't stand up under ourselves, and we're trying to turn folk into something that we think they ought to be before they come to church. But I believe you got to catch a fish before you can clean it. Amen. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. God so loved the world that he gave. And I'm so glad that he gave. I, I don't know where I would be if he hadn't given his son for my sin. But I'm so glad he did. That's what the songwriter said. I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad that he did. Amen. We let us stand for our affirmation of faith. We all pretty much know it by heart. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary. 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us bow our heads. When we give, we not only bless others, but we also enrich our own life. We experience joy in knowing that we are making a difference in somebody else's life. Giving also allows us to trust in God's provision and to recognize that everything we may have is a gift from him. So gracious God, our gifts are small tokens next to all that you have given us. So we ask right now that you take our gifts, Lord, and make them holy so that they may help to feed the hungry, grow the church, minister to the community, and to share your light with a world lost in darkness. Amen. You may be seated. Let us continue our prayer for those who are sick. Sit in, let us bow our heads. And I, I, I want to say this. I, I want you all to be in prayer with me for 20 days. Praying for those who are going through sickness, going through uh, radiation treatment, chemo. I want you to, for 20 days, I want the church to be on one accord. And at least one time a day, for 20 days, I want you to pray that all goes well with those who are on radiation treatment and chemo and cancer victims. I want you to pray for that. I, I, I've been doing this little job and I'm driving cancer victims back and forth to the hospital and, and I hear their stories. But I want for 20 days starting tomorrow I want us to sometime during the day just say a prayer for someone you know to have cancer or and, and just say a prayer for them. Will y'all do that for me? Amen. Let us bow our heads. Father, and loving God, I thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for feeding us with your word, Father God, and encouraging us through John 3.16, Father God. And, and that we broke that, that scripture down, that we know every word, what every word means this morning, Father God. And how that word encompassed the whole Bible, Father. That one verse encompassed everything from Genesis to Revelation on how you want us to be as Christians. So I thank you for that word, Father God. I want you now, Father God, to just take us and mold us and make us to be what you will have us to be, Father God. To serve you, to serve people in the power of your spirit. Eternal God and Father, by whose, whose power we were created and are created, and by whose love we are redeemed, and by whom joy that sustain us, guide us and strengthen us by your spirit. And Father God, we just want to thank you for how your spirit just comes in and just moves things and change situations, Father God. Dear Lord, may we realize afresh today what your death and resurrection mean for us, forgiveness, freedom, and the ability to walk right, talk right with you through this fallen world through eternity. May we uh, always find satisfaction in your willingness to offer yourself to us. Jesus Thank you for choosing a life on earth with us, for teaching us how to live lives that honor God, but also showing us how to confidently challenge the world around us. Thank you for being my wonderful counselor, my mighty God, my everlasting father, my prince of peace. You are my everything, and I just want to say thank you this morning. Jesus Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. God, I surrender my life to you. You can have it all, everything, every part of me, every action, every thought, every behavior and, and desire. I want you to be glorified through me. So here I am, Lord. Take me, use me, send me, change me, clean me, transform me, love me, and love others through me. Take all that I am and use it 
for your good. Father, I pray now for those on this prayer request. I pray still, we still praying and holding up the banner for Lynn Galloway Dobbins, Teresa Rankin, and Kim Reed. We pray for Avon Scott, Mary Parker, Lenora Reed. We glad to see her back in the church today, Father God. Thank God that she's here. We pray for Sister Nikki, too, for my friend for coming today. She could have gone anywhere, but she came today. We thank you. We thank your presence for being here. We, we pray for the family of Timothy Cowan. Continue to lift them up, Father God, and, and ask that the Lord will come in and change things. Heal them. Heal their broken hearts. And those that need to be delivered, deliver, Father God, for you are a delivering God. You break all chains, not some, but you break them all. So, Father, we need the shackles to come off. We pray for Francella Cheryl and Harry Cheryl. And we pray for those families out on vacation, the Jackson family for safe travels. We pray for Sister Carolyn White, many more 80 years of blessing. We pray for the healing journey ministry. We pray for Mount Tabor continued strength and for growth. Growth. Not in numbers, but growth spiritually. Because once we grow spiritually, God said, I will supply. Everything else will come. But we are to seek his face. Turn from our own wicked ways and allow his mercy, his grace, his love, his faith to move us where we need to be moved. So we pray for spiritual growth. So, Father, help us. Help us today to practice what we hear in this, this message today. Bless us as we leave this place. We pray that you will never leave us. And when we've done the best that we could and the best that we can, and we don't know where else to turn, we don't know what, uh, what other words to say, what other prayer to pray, we can always pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when they said, how can we pray? And Jesus says, you can pray like this, say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time we ask that the ushers will come forth as we get ready to dismiss from this service. Amen. Let us stand as we get ready for the benediction. Let us bow our heads. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forevermore. And may the church say amen. 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 And amen. Reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this world a better place if you can. Amen. God bless you.